Hi, this is Derek Murphy from creativity.com. I want to talk about publishing scams. And this is something that's come up in the news recently. I actually put a blog post up a few weeks ago about how also publishing is a scam. And it was basically a response to people on Facebook who have been burnt in the past because there are a lot of author-related services that market and advertise really hard. They're very sales heavy. So um, most of these are called vanity presses. Basically, you pay them to help you publish the book and they help you publish the book, but they're probably overcharging. They spend a lot of money on advertising so that you, they are the first point of contact. So if you Google like how to publish a book, they will find you and they'll start to um, advertise. They might try to get your phone number. They might call you up and try to sell you some packages. They're probably overpriced, but I wouldn't necessarily call them a scam. I think a scam is basically you pay money and you get nothing in return. They don't deliver on what they've promised you. If someone convinces you to drastically overpay, that's a ripoff maybe, but, um, and I don't want to say like that's your fault for not doing your research, but if you research any of the vanity company, vanity publishing presses or companies, um, it's difficult to find the people who are complaining or who feel like they haven't gotten a good value because those uh, companies have such a large profile online. So I know that it's a lot of new authors who are new to publishing fall victim to those larger vanity presses who are using possibly unsavory sales tactics or just like strong arming sales tactics. Um, the things I don't like about vanity presses, is they'll probably, they'll offer you like a larger package that includes everything in co including cover design. And they'll probably offer you something like a certain number of copies, um, printed and shipped to you and maybe some marketing, but generally the marketing that they offer isn't marketing that's actually going to make a difference. You're not actually going to sell a lot of books. They'll promise you marketing. They may say you, you can expect to sell however many books, um, but they don't guarantee books. And when you're paying to publish, that's what you call a vanity press is basically you're paying to play, you're paying to publish your book. Um, you may expect to get your money back. And if a publishing company is telling you that it's likely you'll make your money back, that's probably a sales tactic or a pitch. Um, they're earning their money from you as the author. It's not their responsibility or they're not even incentivized to have you actually sell more books. They don't really care. It'd be nice if you sell books, but that's not their responsibility. That's not what they're selling you. They're just selling you the publishing help, the hand holding, um, figuring out how to design your book files and to upload. Generally, I don't recommend using any of those vanity presses or even a lot of small presses because small presses don't really know about marketing and they don't really know very much about book design. So they may be able to basically get your project finished and put it up so it's for sale, but it won't be successful without a really high quality cover and without somebody who knows what they're doing with marketing. Um, and generally that's not the small press and it's not really you as the author because it takes a while to learn how to do online business and how to sell books. Um, so basically in my article that I wrote, I was saying also publishing is a scam. A lot of authors feel that way because they, they post comments because they're angry because they got ripped off. They spent three or $4,000 publishing their first book. And now they've figured out they can do it for much less money and they can do a much better job. So they're angry at publishing, um, the publishing industry at large, basically. And that's, a difficult position for me because I have been a service provider and I'm always very sensitive. You know, I do cover design. I sometimes offer limited marketing um, help to some indie authors, but it's a weird industry to be in because I feel uncomfortable charging money to help authors publish something that may not be successful. And the successful book has a great amount to do with the kind of book and the potential audience. So if you've written a book that um, doesn't satisfy the market or has a very small target ma market, it's going to be hard to make a lot of money from that book. So you may, I could probably estimate pretty accurately how much a book is going to make based on the size of the market and how well that book fulfills demand for that type of book. Um, so if someone pays me a few thousand dollars to do cover design and I feel like that book isn't going to sell that well, that puts me in an awkward position because I don't want to like, I don't want to piss on author's dreams of having a bestseller. Um, but if their goals aren't lined up with the marketplace, it's hard for me to have a lot of confidence also. So I can support them and I can tell them how to market it and how to reach their readers. Um, 
but I feel bad taking money for something they think is going to earn their money back that maybe I don't believe is actually going to earn their money back. That's a hard position for me to be in, which is why I've been getting out of services. Um, in my defense, it's always like I, I have mostly happy clients. Sometimes I get a client where I can't make them happy with the services that I'm providing. Generally, that's because what they want for their book cover design is not what I feel will sell the book. Um, so it's a ma it's a it's a conflict of our expectations. They want a cover that matches their book project. I want a cover that's going to help them sell the book to their audience. Um, that's why they hired me. But in the end, they're the ones paying. So if I can't give them exactly what they want, I just refund 100%. At least I don't want to be liable for anyone complaining and saying, like, if anybody's unhappy with me for any reason, I want them to have all of their money back because that means um, I'm not at risk. So there's, there's these other things coming up, like in the last week, there's a lot of news with um, Tate Publishing, which was a huge, basically Vanity Press, which I believe, although I'm not intimately familiar with their business practices, um, I, I, they were on my radar a few years ago because they, they advertise really hard, they have a really slick sales funnel um, put together. Looking at their webpage, I was of the opinion that they charge way too much and their cover design, like for me, I'm a cover designer, so for all vanity presses or small presses, if they have, you know, examples of cover design on their website and their cover design examples aren't very good, then I know that most of their covers are not going to be very good, which means all of the authors who are paying to get published with those services, when they end up with a, you know, a subpar book cover that's not going to sell the book, I think they're, it doesn't really matter what they're paying for everything else. It doesn't matter how much marketing advice or, or extra services or bonuses they get or how many copies of the book. None of that is a good deal if they don't get a cover that's going to sell the book. So for me, that's always a huge red flag. Um, but I, but I also like, I, I think they were trying to do a business. Um, I think always when you're growing that fast, basically if you have a publishing, I'm saying basically a lot, I'm going to have to stop um, doing that so much. But if you have a publishing package that's around $2,000, I think is average for most publishing packages. Um, if that's your business model and you have a team that can fulfill a lot of orders quickly and you sell a thousand of those two thousand dollar packages with a lot of advertising that's quickly a two million dollar company and i think they scaled up i would estimate they worked with maybe five thousand authors it could be more than that so they may have made you know ten million dollars um but then you know they're hiring their staff they're paying their employees and everything they made a lot of money but that's not necessarily it doesn't mean they're a scam um unless there are some people who feel like they didn't get their, money, their money's worth. And so from what I understand of this case, um, about 700 people, I think this is right, have collectively sued Tate Publishing for things like they didn't get what they felt what the, what they paid for. So in some cases, um, this is questionable. Like they, they maybe the authors paid for marketing services and they feel like they didn't get marketing services back because they didn't sell any books. Um, that's something I think is a gray area because I know personally, I don't charge a lot for marketing services like that because um, most marketing services do not guarantee sales. And I think that's kind of a sketchy, a sketchy business to be in anyway, but I could do lots and lots of marketing for an author that would be worth the money they paid me because I'm doing a lot of work for them that still resulted in zero book sales because if they didn't have a great cover, if they don't have a book that's attractive to the readers, if they don't have a, a blurb that's really powerful and converts really well, um, I would only charge for marketing if I could control those aspects because those are the things that actually matter and will help sell more books. But if someone paid me for marketing and I didn't have control of those aspects, I couldn't get guarantee sales. Um, and there could be some situation where they pay me a lot of money and I do the work and they still don't sell any books and then they feel like maybe I didn't do the work, um, which is why I don't really do those kind of services. But that's an issue I can sort of sympathize with because I can imagine that could have happened in a lot of cases with companies like Tate that do offer marketing services. Um, however, on the other hand, there were other cases where you know, people paid for 100 copies of their books and they just never got the book. So in, in those cases, and even so, my impulse is to sympathize, sympathize with the company. If they're dealing with thousands of authors and they have a team, um, it's possible that 
you know, if they deal with a thousand author, uh, authors, a few of those authors fell between the cracks and there was just too much going on. They, they grew too quickly. They focused too much on acquisition and not enough on um, customer satisfaction or delivering, you know, what they had offered. I can, again, sympathize with all of that when you're growing an online business. Um, you're juggling a lot of things if you're the owner and you're trying to keep everything running smoothly. It's possible that you screw up sometimes and don't fulfill some orders. Um, so that's, I mean, my first, my first impulse is to not believe that they're just, you know, a scam and they're just screwing over authors. Um, however, I haven't dealt with them personally, and there are a lot of authors who are really upset with Tate Publishing. Um, I think Tate Publishing, the owners settled for a couple million dollars and are possibly doing some jail time. And then I read something today where um, the business might still continue operations. They may still be in business, um, which some authors are really upset about. Like, I don't, I'm not really commenting on Tate Publishing specifically. I'm trying to just unwrap the whole issue of what's considered a scam or, or not a scam. Um, but like I said, in my case, I defend myself by giving 100% refund. So if I were a company like Tate Publishing, if I scaled really big and I was really huge, um, and I had, for example, a lot of employees and there wasn't actually that much profit margin, it might be more difficult for me to offer 100% refunds because I would have to be paying the employees. Um, this is a, it's a tricky, difficult subject. My main point in this video, I have two points. One is that you really have to be very careful about who you hire and who you spend your money on. Um, and there's an impulse when you're first self-publishing a book. If someone tells you, especially if someone, you know, tells you, I really liked your book. I want to help you publish the book. We love it. It's great. We're going to sell a million copies. Um, you just have to give us 2000 to pay for the, you know, the base publishing costs. That can sound really attractive. It's easy to fall for that kind of a, a scam. And what you're actually just paying for is, is um, overpriced publishing services that maybe you don't really need. However, it might be worth it because you get the hand holding, you get somebody taking over for you, um, someone answering questions. I can see how that's an attractive offer. And there's a lot of huge multi-million dollar companies that are offering these services because there's a lot of demand and there's a lot of authors who are willing to pay because they want their book published and they believe in their project. Um, I've, I've tried to stay really small and I try, like I'm very worried about if any authors aren't happy with me for any reason um, because I'm running an online business and because I'm vis visible and I have like an online, um, what's the word, reputation, I have to be very careful about safeguarding the reputation of my business and not doing anything that people can accuse me of being shady or, or being a scam or stealing money. So um, my refund policy is really simple. It's always 100% refund, even when I'm losing money, even if so I've been working for someone for three months and then they decide, you know, I don't like the covers that you've made or whatever. I'm going to start over with something new and I refund them and I lose money. That's, that's, I could probably be better at business and be making a lot more money. Um, but I don't want to end up in the position of something like Tate Publishing. I can totally see it happening, especially with a lot of a lot of the self-publishing businesses are really just self-publishing authors who have figured out how to publish books, who now offer services um, to other authors. I've seen that hundreds of times. Um, a lot of the book promotion sites or services that have been starting up are basically just like a in-house, one author, one family, small business that grows really large because there's so much demand. There's so much demand for book marketing services. Something else that's kind of a red flag is there's a lot of lower end marketing services like um, a new book promotion site and they start actively emailing authors and saying like, you know, for 50 bucks, we'll feature you on the site. If you get emails from someone, that's usually a sign that, um, I don't know, like they, they may not be trustworthy if they were really like if they were BookBub, for example, they don't really need to go out and email people or direct message people because people know where they are. People people know who the performers are. Um, however, new companies, new services, they need to grow somehow. They may be really good services that impl that, it, that try um, using direct messages or email marketing to reach new readers. That doesn't necessarily mean their product won't deliver results. But generally, low-cost, like feature 
your book on my website type of stuff. Um, most of that stuff won't work because authors who want to pay to have their book featured, it's going to be a lot of authors who are failing because their core platform is, is messed up, like their covers aren't any good. So what you'll get is a lot of low quality book covers on sites where you have paid access and you don't want your book to show up next to a whole bunch of other low quality book covers because readers of your genre aren't going to be going to those sites to find out what they want to read. Um, so it's kind of, a, I mean, I have a site that, that's kind of like that, that I might turn into one of those kind of sites because there is a lot of demand and I think I can do it better and provide a service that, um, that actually has more results. I'm kind of like, I'm tired of seeing all of these other sites pop up that don't really do anything, but I know that a lot of authors are spending lots of money trying out all these different sites that provide zero results. So, I mean, as a business owner, I want to try to meet the demands of the market rather than just tell the market what they should actually be doing. It's the same thing with the book. Like you can't change the, the readership of your genre and teach them to appreciate the services or the product that you're offering. You have to provide products or services that, that um, authors are looking for, that readers are looking for, or you have to catch their attention and put them through an education funnel to train them to understand the benefits of the product or the service that you're offering, which is something you can do. I'm going to talk more about in my next course, the, um, the reader journey, which is something I heard from Sean Platt recently at the Smarters, Smarter Artist Summit. But basically, um, you can get a reader in your funnel and you can educate them on the benefits of your book. It doesn't really work for books because you can't convince someone to enjoy your book. They either read it, they either like it, like the book is the final product. It either um, the readers like it and appreciate it for what it is. You can't convince them that it's better than than they think it is. Like education doesn't work in that sense. So the whole sales thing with, with fiction especially, um, it doesn't work for most readers, but you can still be building a relationship with readers. And if they like you or trust you more, they're more likely to listen to your recommendations or to um, to buy your book. It's different with fiction. Um, a lot of the nonfiction, like the business stuff that I have used to build my nonfiction businesses, a lot of that um, content marketing, getting visibility online, that all still works for, for fiction, but um, it ends with the product. So I can get a lot of visibility for my books, but if my books weren't good and they didn't satisfy readers, I wouldn't have any success. Even if I had great covers and great um, blurbs, I couldn't like continue well. There is a book on Amazon ahead of my books that only has like three reviews and it's like a three star average um, that somehow still at like 300 paid rank in the Amazon store. So there are ways, even if you have a product that isn't super and even if people aren't really loving it, you can spend a lot of money on advertising or promotion and stick pretty high in the Amazon store and still earn money. I don't think it's sustainable. He's been there for like at least a month. So he's earning a lot of money from a product that I don't think is a great product that I don't think readers think is a great product. It is still possible. Um, I'm kind of got, got off target on a tangent, but my point with this video is that it's a little bit of a gray area. I don't think all self-publishing is a scam, but there are definitely a lot of major million dollar com publishing companies um, who are advertising heavily, who are selling overpriced packages even if they deliver on everything they promise you, it's still not a very good deal and it probably still won't sell any books. So you do need to be aware of the scams that are out there, even if they're not really scams. You need to be aware of the, I think predatory author services is a better description. I think a scam is like a ripoff where you, where you get screwed over basically. And I don't think these companies are necessarily scams because they're providing services that authors are willing to pay for. Um, if they lie about what you're actually getting and if you don't get what they promised, then yeah, I think that's a scam. But I think in a lot of cases, they may imply that you'll sell a lot of books, but they won't promise that you'll sell a lot of books. So they may make it sound like this is a great deal that is necessary for your success, um, which is a sales tactic, which is good for their business and not good for for you as an author. I think they're predatory because their business model is about making money from authors, not about selling books to readers. 
um, which is something you need to be aware of and watch out for. And I think if you're self-publishing, you definitely need to be following self-publishing gurus um, like Joanna Penn or David Gogren. There's I have a list on my on creativity where it's like my 20 favorite people in self-publishing or something. Um, if you Google something like that, you'll probably find it. You should be following those people and not just like if you if you see something advertised to you or if you see someone aggressively selling something to you, I think you need to take a step back and do some more research and really consider things before you sign any kind of like a publishing contract or deal. Even if someone says we want to publish you, anytime someone charges you to publish your book, I think that's a red flag. Um, however, I think it's also really important if you want to make money with your books to pay for professional services, to find the best services, the best cover design, formatting, um, possibly marketing, though I think a lot of people who charge for marketing don't really know what they're doing and can't actually sell books. But it is important to pay for quality services because if you don't have the basic platform done, like a really nice cover, a nice website, landing page, sales description, um, there are services that are worth paying for. And I think if you have the kind of book that fulfills a large market and is has the potential to make money, um, I think investing in your book can be good business. I think a lot of authors have a product that isn't going to sell a lot of money. So investing in a product that doesn't have a market that's willing to pay for it, I think that isn't an, isn't really an investment. That's um, vanity publishing by definition is just paying to get visibility for your book because you know it, it's you want your book to be a bestseller, but maybe you didn't consider who else is willing to pay for it. It's a complicated subject. Um, there are people, I don't think everything is a scam, but I think you can pay for quality services and that might be a good use of your money. Definitely do your research, um, find the best quality products and services that you can afford, know who you're getting into business with, don't be quick to sign something just because someone says they love your book. I'm in this video now, I think I'm rambling, um, but I hope some of that helps you to avoid um, jumping in bed with someone who might be a, a predatory service.